Shannon, thank you again for joining us in ADB on the Ground. Koi, it's my pleasure. Yeah, so you just shared a session on energy policy and regulation earlier. It's a complex topic. Uh, to be honest, I'm not a policy or regulatory expert, but can you share some of the insights that you got from that session? Yeah, I mean, I think what was lucky about the session is that we had participation from mm -hmm you know, countries that are at various different stages of thinking about renewables. I mean, we had um, we had countries, you know, starting with Laos, PDR, where they really don't have any non-hydro renewables, right? And then we okay. had the Philippines, which had, you know, a, a, an ambitious start, but then has now encountered some problems and is having a rethink about what their next move is going to be. And then you've got, we had India and China, Right. And so and then we also had this great um, analyst who sort of looks across the Asia Pacific and looking at bankability and how, you know, policy and regulation actually impacts the project bankability. And uh, you could see that the projects that had strong initiatives or the countries that have strong initiatives, they're really the, the costs of generation in those countries are much lower. Right. You know, one thing I'm wondering, I, I got this when I popped into your session, um, I think Pradeep Pereira mm. said that. The reverse auction, recent reverse auction results in India were like four US cents. Yeah. That's such a low rate. And I think, you know, if you think about other options, I mean, that, that changed the landscape, I think. I mean, do you see like, uh, uh, like uh, government, the government adapting to that new reality? Or is there sort of embedded interest that's resisting that change and trying to hold on as long as they can before making that transition? I mean, what, what's happening? It depends country to country. I mean, yeah. India really pioneered this renewable reverse auction sort of idea, and, and they were really, I think, the first to achieve some of these really low tariffs that we've seen replicated in countries across the globe. And I think this has been an inspiration to a lot of countries to know that they don't necessarily have to sacrifice affordable energy at the cause of clean energy, right. that both can both can happen uh, in, at the same time, um, and so I think that's getting some of the the sort of naysayers or the the, the embedded interests, um, you know, to get more on board with the idea that that these can be part of the mix in a meaningful way. Right. You know, another thing that Pradeep said was uh, back in uh, two thousand seventeen, hmm. the grid par uh, parity with traditional like coal sources was achieved in India. That's that's fantastic. Um, you know, maybe one last thing. I mean, some of the viewers might not understand what the reverse auction process means. Yes. D can you sh just share some of just know, a short summary sh short of explanation yeah, what it is? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll let me give it a shot. So, okay. so basically, uh, in India, especially where they have the solar park model, um, you know, you can bid to build a project of a certain capacity, say a okay. 50 megawatt project in a certain geographic region. So in doing that, you already know what your fuel resource is, right? Because you know the specific region, you know the solar installation, right. and you can sort of look at what you could build a plant for, what your returns need to be, and then you make a bid. And okay. they start filling up the solar plants with the lowest bid electricity price. Okay. And they, they go in a reverse order. They go with the lowest bid, the next lowest bid, until they fill the total plant capacity. And, uh, and so they are, are really expanding solar across India through this mechanism. So right. And very and successful. Are the losing bidders, do they get the chance to... They can bid in future bid, auctions. Bid, yeah. In the future auctions. Yeah, okay. certainly. So, Certainly. I will, I should mention, you know, there is a little bit of tension, you know, the, the first presenter who was sort of looking across the Asia Pacific did say that there have been a lot of cost overruns. And okay. in addition, there are some underperforming assets. And so one of the, the, one of the concerns that some people have is that these auctions are causing so much downward price pressure on the developers that they're mm -hmm. actually going to end up losing money. And I think, you know, we want it to be a sustainable ecosystem, right, right. Where, where everybody's sort of earning adequate returns to make sure that these are, that these projects, you know, persist and, and thrive in, in the longer term. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing those insights. Thank and, you for uh, inviting me. I think uh, we'll have you in another episode of ADB on the Ground. Looking forward to that. <laughs> Looking forward to it as well, Koi. Thanks very much. Thanks, Shannon. <laughs>